Thank you, Bruno. Which match? Yeah. Which it match was, was this? Match number four. When she won the, the backstroke skins, she she achieved uh, 60 points in total. But wasn't enough for the MVP. Okay, thank you. Match six, right? A four. Match four. Mm -hmm. Hello, Olivia. How are oh, you doing? Hello. How are you? Oh, doing great. Am I better like this, or can I go like this? Um, both. Both are fine. Whatever. Whatever you both find more comfortable. All right. Cool. A little too bright. No. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? You know, I'm not bad. Um, in London right now, got a yeah. new dog. That's good. What kind? Of, what kind of dog? It's a Samoyed. I have I don't know. That it's is... like a husky breed, but it's completely white. Oh wow! Nice, nice. My parents have a golden doodle. Mm. They're crazy, um, but really, really cute. Let me see. I think it's too bright in here. Hey, Martin. Hi. Hi, everyone. What's hey, Martin. Up? How are you doing? Yeah, how are you guys? How are you? Oh, we're yeah. doing great. So, guys, a little intro. Um, please treat this more of a discussion than an interview. Completely open for any comments. Um, how, long, how long would you like for this to last? Um, I was under the impression that it was going to be an hour. But perfect. Anything short no, of time good. too. <laughs> perfect. Somewhere around mm -hmm. an hour is like golden for us. Perfect. Mm -hmm. perfect. perfect. And um, you will be showing on the screen for people. Just a heads up. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll start any minute. It takes us just a couple of minutes to set up your cameras um, where they need to be, and then I'll give you a five second countdown. Okay. Awesome. Martin, did you get my email? I did, I did. Uh, I'll respond after this, if that's okay. Yeah, of course. No, sorry sorry for the late response. We had a little bit of a um, delay in terms of um, the amount of stuff we just had piled on us, and we didn't want to show up to the meeting unprepared, um, but we'll, we'll be totally ready for tomorrow, after tomorrow, anytime. I figured. So let's do Wednesday. Do you, do you want some like tech people on my end? Um, can I, I, right? mm -hmm. can I respond to you within um, within the bounds of this evening? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll I'll shoot you an email after, and then we um, we'll we'll figure it out. Yeah. Perfect. Thank that. you. <laughs> Are you guys both in U.S. right now? What's that? Are you guys both in U.S. right now? I'm uh, in the U.S. I'm in Poland. Poland. Polska. Yes. What time is it there? 7? Uh, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Yeah, it's noon here. Just got out of practice. Oh, that's nice. Martin, did you practice today? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not yet? What do you mean? I'm going right after this, I promise. I promise. No way. That's good. It's like the ISL schedule. That we have yeah, it's on that schedule. <laughs> seven to nine you know um before 2016 olympics i had the opportunity to train at the adn with andrea de nino and for ex for some reason i don't know why he had this crazy idea that we should adjust to the um times of rio in italy <laughs> yeah Oh, wow. So um, our evening practice started at midnight and it ended at 3 a.m. <laughs> oh, my God. It was the worst time of my life. Um, it was just so strange. It was wow. like living in a dream. <laughs> yeah. We did something similar in 2016. We had our training camp in San Antonio. We actually weren't that far off of, uh, of Rio time, but the finals were supposed to start at like 9 p.m. or whatever. Um, 
So we had to do late practices and stay up till 1 a.m. to get adjusted and acclimated and stuff. So I didn't mind staying up late, though. It wasn't bad. <laughs> oh, so it works out for some. Yeah. Some yeah. people actually enjoyed the schedule we had as well. But for me, it was just, I don't know. I didn't have any appetite. I mm. had a weird schedule of sleep. It was, it was a lot for me. Same. So we should be ready any minute right now. Boys. This is going live, right, Ivan? Yes, this will be live, and um, we'll be also uploading this. We don't upload instantly, um, but this will eventually get uploaded, and we'll push a notification on all our social media once it gets uploaded. But we also pushed a notification regarding the live. Mm -hmm. We get anywhere from six, seven hundred viewers to like two, three thousand. That's the range oh, on the live. This will be big. <laughs> yeah, it's huge showing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. the recordings are watched a lot better yeah all right wait so martin when are the um fine the the championship or the like qualifying you said in two uh, weeks yeah, Sunday. Uh, no, no, Sunday. Wednesday. I leave Wednesday. Wednesday. Where are they? Uh, it's just it's like, please, uh, Austin. It's like a little. Oh, oh, Austin. I know where no, Austin it's actually, is. Um, it's close by where your mom is from. It's like. Vengo uh, it, It's like an hour away. It's like the. Okay. The area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. That'll be fun. Um, yeah. We're ready to go live. Um, if you guys are. Let's do it. So I'll give you a five sec countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Hello and welcome to the ISL podcast. We have Olivia Smoliga and Martin Cheslak with us today, alongside our usual host Bruno and me, Ivan. Um, and Olivia, Martin, thank you so much for making it here. It means a lot to us. Um, thank you. How was, um, I mean, the ISL season has ended. You guys won, as everyone knows. Ooh. How was the experience of, of ISL 2020 in general for you? Um, just a couple of words to, to start things off. Yeah, uh, the second season here compared to the first was obviously different, being in a bubble, um, how it was. But everything was so well organized and planned out. Um, we had such a great team. We all got so close within these six weeks. And I think that aided us in uh, winning the championship. I had an amazing time. I'm still thinking about it. I miss it. Um, it but it was great. Yeah, and I think for me, uh, and I spoke, to, spoke about this in a different interview, um, you know, in the times where the social contact is so limited and you don't really get to hang out in big groups, uh, you know, it might seem like being close in the bubble will be a situation where you're really separated from the world, but it, it, for me, it turned out it turned out to be this uh, incredible social experience. Actually, being you know locked in with all the athletes in the hotel, um, yeah, it was just like bringing us closer together. There's a lot of opportunities to just meet people, interact with them, um, and you know, just re you really learn how there's so much about each person. You know, like um, you know, there's something interesting about a anyone, and being locked in the bubble, you get to explore all these relationships. Um, so yeah, I just found it like a pre, uh, it's like a paradox, right? And that it was it was meant to socially isolate us, but turned out to be a cool social experience. Thank you, thank you. And um, do you guys feel like this team atmosphere that you created in season one kind of carried out to season two, and you guys just developed upon it, or was season two with this bubble? You guys had a bunch of new people in your roster. Is it, is it sort of a new team from season one or is it the same team yet more strong, more connected? Yeah, I would say same team, more strong, more connected. Like Martin was new, but he fit in great. We have a lot of uh, Polish swimmers on our team and um, or a handful, a good amount. I feel like everyone just came together because we all had the same mindset. You know, those that were on the team in season one, we got third last season kind of, you know, bittersweet because of course we enjoyed the experience, but 
We wanted to win that championship. We came close so many times. So I think we had a definitely a different energy going into season two and all of the new additions that we uh, got in season two were like wanting to do the same exact thing. Like Marcin said, it's so great. We got to meet so many cool people and really respect and appreciate everyone who came out, um, who wanted to join the ISL bubble. And um, I don't know, like everything just grooved for Cali Condors. Like everyone hang, hung out with everyone um, on our team and we just wanted to have fun. And I think that definitely helped us uh, in each match. Um, everyone just kind of like bounced off everybody else's energy. Like we just wanted to have a good time and we wanted to win. And I feel like we walked on deck every match, like with that energy. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was new on the team. So, uh, yeah, second season was great for me. Um, but like I said, I think the, the circumstance has created a good, good opportunities for us to, to get together, you know, closer together as a team. Um, so yeah, I think another 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 area that contributed to us getting, uh, you know, just being like a good team environment was uh, was the fact that we come from only a few cultures, a few groups. You know, you have the Georgia crew, which Olivia is from. Uh, you have the Texas guys, the Florida Gators. There's a, a few Polish dudes, and that's pretty much it. You know, that's the Cali Condors team. So you know, in the situation where only a few groups mix in. Uh, it's easier to create the bond so quickly. And I think that was, uh, that was a huge factor for us, I think. Yeah. Of course, of course. Definitely. And you, you, you mentioned the groups a little bit. Um, do you feel like you guys were like a collection of very um, cohesive groups or did these groups mold into something, into a collective? We, we had a like a, a bunch of different groups that I think, like I said, like same mindset going into each practice in between matches. Um, we had great leaders on our team. So although there were separate groups, like everyone had the same idea going into every practice. And I think it just kind of molded well, um, even though we may have been doing different practices uh, throughout, throughout the six weeks. Um, but yeah, although, yeah, although there were different groups, still same mindset and we still got the work done. And even if I'm like in a lane next to someone who's doing something different than me, like we would always be hyping each other up at practice. Like, let's go. You got this, depending on whatever set that they had. Um, and even off the or outside of the pool, like in the hotel, like that's kind of just how it was. I mean, we all kind of pretty much knew each other. Like Martine said, there's not very many groups. Um so we just clicked. It was, it was really special. I feel like everything aligned like perfectly for this season for us. And I think, I think Jason's personality played, uh, mm. played a big role in this. Yeah. Uh, if for, for the guys who don't know Jason Lee's like, uh, he's just, you know, like such a cool dude. <laughs> There's no matter where to describe him, you know, so relaxed and um, just like welcoming. And I think his, his approach to the team uh, helped out, like, was a big, big part of creating the culture. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm a, a great example where I train by myself and I don't really do all that much training. And I think there could be groups where I feel the pressure of having to do more or, you know, f feeling the, um, the coach is not being happy with, with how I'm training, but here, I, you know, I just felt so comfortable with, with my plan. And, you know, I just felt the support from Jason and I think he, you know, I think he was just so great. Yeah, definitely. And both of you mentioned the circumstances uh, of this season and the circumstances put Cali Condors and you guys in the first match against the defending champions and you got that victory. And you also swam very, very fast, especially Olivia and you, Martin. And how was uh, the first part of the season for you guys? Yeah, the first match was probably like a top three of my favorite with the semi and the final, the first match. Like we hadn't raced in like six to eight months I think it was so I I describe it this way like every time someone asks I feel like we just shot out of a cannon and we just were really excited to race and come together and we obviously had that um in our minds that we were going against energy standard being the defending champions so to see that we were really putting up a good fight against them and then ended up victorious in the end was great momentum I think going into every other match in the season. Um, 
I think everyone was just fired up uh, on every single team. I, I would want to say to race. Cause this is like what we're meant to do. We're meant to compete. We're meant to entertain. And um, it had been a really long time. So I think everyone was so excited and we just carried that. Yeah. Uh, for me, there's a lot of excitement going to the first meet, like first meet for me this year <laughs> so you know pretty pretty yeah. heavy pretty heavy competition uh you know my first race going with chad and tom shields caleb uh yeah it just like sparked this excitement that i think uh you know just like continue over the season um i think i think it was good having having such a big meet up front um you know it set us in this right tone yeah Definitely. And talking about that first meet, what, how did you feel uh, the jackpot rule impacted it? I mean, Olivia, uh, she was like, she loves stealing points from other people. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I think it, for our team, this is a this is a huge advantage, the jackpot rule, and. Throughout the seasons, throughout the season, I know coaches and Jason tried. Uh, utilizing it to our advantage uh, I think it cha you can change so much you can be going to the last event and with just a good turn turn of events you you snag 30 40 points and get to the lead uh, yeah I think I think that's good for the league and just for swimming that there is this level of uncertainty at all, at all times at no point you can say the, the meet is won um, I, you know just for like the fan, fan engagement and uh You know, spectators. I think that's good. That, you know, at the in one minute, it can all change. Yeah, I feel the same, and I think also with that, um, it's mental too. You see one of your teammates. Um, of course, we were always happy when Callie Connor stole the points. So I think, like for a, maybe for another team, it's like, you know, um, I don't know. I think it definitely plays a mental uh, role for others if points are stolen um, and it gives advantages to certain teams. And for us, we were very fortunate and it's uh, it definitely brings another level of excitement to the already exciting ISL meet. Thank you. Thank you. What about the money aspect of the jackpot rule? A lot of swimmers voiced their um, discomfort and unalignment with the fact that in the first couple of matches, the jackpot rule worked on money as well. Um, What are your thoughts on that? Uh, did they stop working on money? Uh, yeah, after after first couple of matches, um, the jackpot rule did not apply to um, prize money. Mm, I see. I did not know that. Um, yeah, I think it, it, it's a good thing. You know, this only pushes people to be faster. And you know, let's say for for the coming seasons. Um, You you want the you, you want you want there to be a lot of fast swimming and just the fact that you can steal points and, and money, um, I think I think that's a good thing. You know, you, it's just like everyone coming into the race uh, just you know go, goes all out and you know goes for the points and the money. Uh, it's just this extra motivating factor. So, um, but then I mean I could see the point. Obviously, there's there's races where you have Caleb who just crashes everyone and um yeah like some people just get unlucky racing racing him and like being able to uh to win the the prize money yeah i um yeah i didn't know that they stopped doing it i don't mind it for the points i totally agree you know i again like martin i see both sides i think the points is great if you're able to steal points i mean that's what it's all about isl is just scoring points trying to win a championship in terms of money i feel like isl was created to give um so many more opportunities to all swimmers rather than just like a top uh, percentage like many other meets are so to have it just being a points thing um like you said into like a little bit into the season is is great because um ISL gives so much opportunity and, and um, that's what makes it so special in my opinion. Yeah, that's a good point. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. What yeah, do you guys like think that. of the solidarity program? Uh, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. No, I th yeah. It's just amazing because yeah. 
And I, I had this conversation frequently with people um, and it's, it's a talk about how, how nowadays you can, you can actually be a professional swimmer, not only being the best in the world or top three in the world. So yeah. this is what ISL has created. You, you, and I think you can already see the effects of that. There'll be more older people staying in swimming. It, it just becomes this like career path where people stick to swimming longer uh you know if you're doing well in the isl you can have a family and support the family through the through swimming um so yeah this this will bring a lot of changes i think to the structure of swimming you won't see people retiring at early, at the young age because uh yeah they'll just be professional swimmers and solidarity program is a part of it you know you can you, you can rely there's like a, a safety net a cushion of financial support that you have and you just can train now worrying about the like the basic needs. Yeah, yeah I think it's you. a beautiful thing. Oh, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> no, no, sorry. Please no. go ahead, Olivia. Yeah, I think it's a beautiful thing. Like I said, it offers so much opportunity to all swimmers, a much wider range of swimmers. Like Martine said, not only like the top percentage. I actually had a conversation with Bo Becker, who was on our team, and he was called to action pretty um, short notice, like to get back into the pool, to get into train because we needed, uh, extra relay swimmers, um, on the team. And he was telling me that he trains in, uh, Minnesota. He's a coach as well, like a club coach. And he said the solidarity act ISL, um, allows me to continue to train, like allows swimmers like me to train, um, so even someone that, you know, helped us on relays or maybe was about to hang up the cap and goggles got, it was able to get back into the pool because he's financially supported month to month for a whole year. That's, that's crazy. I think it's, it's so awesome. Yeah. And just to add to that, I, I think this financial support uh, contributes to just well-being, you know, like a mental well-being for swimmers. Uh, you know, let's, let's be, let's be honest. It's not the sport yet where, uh, you make a lot of money swimming. Uh, you know, they're just a few top dogs that, you know, make the money and, and, and do very well. But there's just a lot of struggle in, in, the, in swimmers. The young swimmers not trying to figure out whether they should uh, maybe get a job or, uh, or keep on swimming and then, you know, maybe live off their parents still. So, yeah, this just like creates this lightness in, in, the, in the heads of swimmers where, um, you don't worry about the fi financial aspect as much. Uh, maybe with a little, little help of your federation or a club team or some prize money, you can actually support yourself. So uh, I think, you know, I think this, this helps with performance, you know, being, being mentally fresh and not worrying about the survival aspect of, of your life. Uh, yeah, I think it, you know, contributes to, to fast swims. Yeah. It makes total sense, yeah. So we can That's expect more uh, 40 year olds dropping 21 sevens in the 50 uh, fly in the future. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that's where it's going. There'll be a lot of 30 year olds still swimming doing ISL. All right, thank you. And going back into the numbers guys, not on the financial, but on swimming wise, uh, you started both of you uh, swimming very very fast I mean Olivia 25-7 on the 50 back on the first match Martin you were kind of improving every match you saw starting for example in the 100 fly with 50.2 then 49.5 breaking the Polish record and finishing with a 49.18 in the final the 10 uh, fastest performance uh, performer sorry of all time in Olivia I mean you were on fire breaking those American records in the 50 and 100 backstroke and also being key on those freestyle relays. How did you feel during the season? How was the training in the environment in between the Cali Condors? Because, I mean, you had very competitive swimmers and maybe there is something that, that you can take us on a little bit of insight there. Yeah, maybe yeah. like um, that environment helped you guys to progress because obviously your results progressed throughout the season. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think, like I said, our team was so special and I was constantly inspired by what everyone was doing at practice or how they carried themselves throughout the season. You kind of uh, like want to step up every day at practice and make sure that you're on point as much as you can be, you know, 
in the middle of training, like the third, fourth matches, we were back to back doing pretty normal practices up until that point. Um, got rest of course for, for semis and finals. Um, so it was kind of tough in the middle there, but people were crushing it in, in workouts and still, you know, lifting normally. Like it was a very inspiring environment to be around. I was just talking to Natalie Hines, who I trained with here in Georgia. And we were like this morning, literally we're like, wow, we were with the best swimmers in the world for six weeks, like the top of the top, um, who just wanted to go out and race and really just show what they could do. Um, like they always do. It was just, you know, like a crash course, like so much racing, such little time. So you really got to see it firsthand very quick. We're like, wow, we're with the best swimmers in the world for so long. And um, it definitely gave me a greater sense of purpose throughout this training camp. Um, I knew what I had to look forward to like each week. And that just inspired me. It gave me like a different energy to the sport, which I have had before, but it had been a while, you know, of course, due to COVID, we were restricted in various ways. And um, just to be around such incredible people like I feel like everyone just wanted to step their game up like all the time like they just wanted to see what we could do like we were joking around match to match like make them cry you know we were just hyping each other up like all the time and like in Polish like with the boys um you say like yazda which means like let's ride you know we were just so excited we were so grateful to be there first of all so grateful that ISL actually even happened you know I didn't even think it was going to and we were just happy to be there. I mean, I think around the third or the fourth match, I was tired, you know, I was like struggling because it was like off of the fresh, like first two match experience. And, uh, but you still kept it pushing because we just had the best team in the league for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I was just going to add to pretty much what Olivia said. I, th I think there's been like a rule in psychology that, you will become a person or more like a person um, to the people that you surround yourself with, right? And, you know, we were surrounded by some, some really cool, uh, amazing athletes. And I think that elevated, you know, us as, as athletes as well. So, um, you know, I, tr I tried to be like a sponge being there, you know, speaking with, with the legends like Jason or or Caleb or Olivia, you know, any really, any expert, any amazing swimmer in there, uh, there's just so much to learn from. And I think just to, you know, touch on your question, I think that that really contributed to the first fast swimming, you know, because, you know, there's more than just training. There's a race strategy. Um, there's how you position yourself mentally before a race. And those things you could have learned on the spot from, you know, from match to match. Uh, so by the time we got to the final, I just, I, I, I felt so much more experience in swimming, uh, more confident going to the races. Uh, I knew exactly what to do for the warm up, warm down, uh, had a good routine. So just, you know, the environment and all the people there were pushing us, you know, you know, every match, it was a step further into, into this like athlete development, I'd say. Yeah. Like Marchi was dropping time match after match after match. So that like learning experience. I feel like, you know, I, I feel like I'm going to carry that through into the next year, into all the next um, meets that I have. Um, because yeah, like I said, it was six weeks of just like accelerated, you know, um, like in such a, comp a compacted time, all these matches, you just get to learn match after match after match, what works for you, what doesn't strategies, how to, uh, work on your mental and emotional like capacity throughout all these matches, getting yourself hyped up. Like, yeah, it's really cool to see like Martin's a testament. Like he learned after every match, like what to do differently or keep the same or whatever. Like that was what made ISL so special. Yeah. And I think, I think coming off, everyone has this momentum going for them. So, you know, yeah. everyone is back to training, but like the, the knowledge and the experience is just going to keep on pushing us for the, uh, upcoming year. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And you, you mentioned two ways of improving throughout the season. One seems to be um, learning yourself better as an athlete, as a racer, and knowing what you need to do. But another aspect of it is, is of course, the people that influence you. And both of you mentioned that. And mm -hmm. um, 
could you potentially um, highlight a single person that had the most impact from for you throughout the season? Um, if not, that's totally fine too. Uh, I would say I would say Jason for me, and uh, I'll explain why. Uh, it, it, Jason and I had this way, like we just bonded a lot over being in a similar similar situation where you know he was he was sort of where I am 15 years ago which is sort of training training by himself uh you know just figuring things out not really knowing not really having a set plan um so I, you know I just felt this like him empathizing with with where I'm at and you know it just got us closer closer together and as we got closer we just had like more more deep conversation you know just just got you know got to know each other um i got to learn so much from him uh training wise but also uh, just like managing managing your life a little bit yeah um it, you know and this is a guy who's been through a lot of a lot of cool um aspects of swimming and you know it's just like more further in life than i am so you know it's just like a person for me to talk to thank you thank yeah. you Maxim. I, um, I feel like I could pick out something from uh, everyone on the team. Like everyone had something to add. Like I said, um, Caleb and I were, were fortunate enough to be captains, but I felt like everyone stepped up in their own way. If they wanted to say something in a team meeting, they would. And yeah, like I feel like I, I tried my best too to be a sponge and to listen to um, what everyone was saying. Uh, but something that probably stood out um, – someone that probably stood out would be Caleb for me. Um, we had so many conversations about, um, like mental attitude and mental health throughout, you know, practices and throughout this year, what, like how COVID had affected us and what I took away, I think the most, especially during these, during the matches themselves, like throughout this whole six week period was having an on and off switch. We talked about that uh, quite a bit. Um, uh, throughout this time, it was like, you know, you're going to be high energy and you have to be on, you know, all the time. Like when you're in team meetings, even when you're eating lunch and dinner with your friends, you know, you're giving a certain amount of energy. And then when you're stepping on the pool deck for a match, you have to be on and ready to go and ready to race and ready to score points. And that's really important. But then you also have to have the off switch when you go back to the hotel and you're just able to chill and you know, reflect on whatever uh, you had done that day and take time to rest, um, which, which was great, uh, a great reminder, um, great to like put it into words that way, because that's kind of what I tried to do throughout the six weeks, because it, it was like a, a business trip, you know, it's like what I described to um, people when I come back, I was just on a little business trip and, and you have to kind of gauge your emotions and, and everything like, um, while you're in a situation like that. And another person too, who I like love talking to is Lily. Uh, we were warming down after a match and uh, we were just like talking about how we don't like, uh, like whiners, like people who complain, you know what I mean? You gotta keep it pushing, you gotta keep it going and be grateful for the um, circumstances that you're in and, and make whatever is in front of you work to the best of your ability. So. Uh, but everyone, everyone had something to add. It, it was great. Marcin was very chill uh, influence on me, you know, very like good balance of everything from everyone on the team. Uh, it was just like I said, again and again, special, special. That's one of the best things I've heard, a business trip. <laughs> I really like it. Yeah, that. I know. Yeah. <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah. Um, and um, we already touched base a little bit upon uh, your guys' training during the bubble what about your training um coming into the isl i mean covid covid season was probably the most difficult season for everyone for years and years um how's the training for you guys coming in um i was pretty fortunate uh with the um circumstances that i had here i was able to go home to chicago for about two months um in the thick of it like april may time and I was fortunate enough to have like a backyard pool from a, from a neighbor. So um, that was really great. Although it's different, you know, you still have to make it work. I still felt so fortunate that I was able to touch water. Um, and then going right into ISL here in Georgia, we did have um, precautionary um, 
you know, methods, I guess, uh, going into each practice into weights, like how many people we could have in a certain situation. But, um, I think kind of like the light at the end of the tunnel was ISL. So during like, you know, August, September, we were like, okay, well, ISL is looking like it's going to happen and we're going to get guaranteed pool time and pool space and gym space. So we were really looking forward to that. That was going to be kind of like a fine tuning period, um, for the most part, but it's so special that ISL was able to give us pool time. Cause so many people I'm like, Martin would probably just tell you now, um, he couldn't train for a while and several, many other European, uh, countries too. Yeah, no, we actually, during ISL, we had, uh, pools getting closed down in Poland. So if we were back at home, we wouldn't have a place to train. So the fact that we were, you know, in Budapest, we had everything, everything organized, but, um, yeah, no, the experience of 2020 has definitely been, you know, a little bit all over the place. Uh, but I think it was, for me, it was a good learning opportunity where, you know, it's sort of, you're thrown out of your routine, you know, things are, um, things are just different for you training wise and you, you have to adapt as you go. And, you know, maybe you don't get to swim, but you do a little bit more uh, training dry land or lifting. And it just seems like this worked out well for a lot of people uh, swimming less and, you know, maybe doing a lot of other things other than swimming. Uh, maybe this was, this, you know, a thing that, you know, stimulated people to, to get on another level. And I think it, 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 it's sort of what happened with me. Um, yeah, like I was at the training trip in Spain and, you know, the pandemic happened. We, we you know, we come back to, to Poland for quarantine and uh, they tell us there's no Olympics. And, you know, in an athlete's life, everything is based on this goal you have. You know, you hook to something and that's what drives you day to day. Uh, you get up and, you know, you go for it. And once you don't have it, uh, like you know there's like less meaning in your life almost um so i think for us knowing that the isl will happen had us you know it created this hook that we could you know be looking forward to and you know with time things things got a little easier we had some some camps that our federations uh put together for us uh we trained all together as a group and, you know, we came very hungry of racing uh, as the ISL came. There's not that much opportunity to, to compete. Uh, you know, and a lot of us have this mentality of competitors. You know, it's like a, like a nature. It's a natural selection for, uh, for sports. You, you naturally have a lot of people that like to compete against each other. Uh, so if you take that away from them for a lot, you know, longer period of time, they're going to they're gonna miss it. And once you give it back to them, you know, explode which i think happened yeah and the pandemic really like hit everywhere in the world impacted a lot of swimmers and you said it having less pool time and now uh just a few months ago a few weeks ago we saw one of the fastest uh, performances in history do you think both of you guys olivia and marcin that the swimming mentality the mindset of swimming a lot of yardage meters is gonna change Maybe. Yeah, I think so. I think so. This, this will just give coaches a lot more information on, you know, like it forced them into a situation that will probably never happen naturally. So a coach would, would not tell their athletes, okay, this year we're going to swim much more. Uh, you actually just take a two month break from the pool and let's lift more. You know, this would never uh, be a thing in many programs. Uh, but the, the circumstance brought that upon us and, uh, the coaches had were forced into this this new uh, new new project really, and you know seeing that it worked out uh, probably will affect how they organize their groups and how they write programs. And uh, I could see that having having an impact on on just training strategies. Maybe maybe there'll be you know the next big thing in swimming will be uh, will be forced upon us by by COVID. Yeah, I felt, um, I definitely feel like I uh, appreciated the importance of rest during this period. You know, I was doing singles for those two months that I was in Chicago. I feel like 
you know, where usually you have doubles, you have, you know, it's, it's totally different. I mean, the yardage count was way low. Um, so I definitely appreciated being able to take a break. And I think moving forward, um, people, you know, understand that taking a physical and a mental break is really important, but I think what, the, the biggest takeaway for me throughout all this is that, yeah, maybe practices and, and training will change, but the mental aspect of the sport and how you carry yourself in life with whatever cards are thrown at you and how you handle this is like the biggest takeaway because us, everything here throughout this year, for the most part was completely out of our control. So it's like, um, sorry. So it's like, um, yeah. How do you handle yourself when, when you can't even do anything about it? Um, and I feel like it also made me very grateful when I was able to come back. Like we were so thrilled that ISL was able to happen, being grateful for another opportunity to race. And you just appreciate like the little things way more rather than the monotony of going to practice all the time. Um, you appreciate something when it's taken away from you. So I think that also, uh, has a effect. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you. So um, j- just to cap this off a little bit, um, would it be safe to sort of say that um, COVID served two purposes for the world of swimming? First of all, it sped up the natural evolution of swimming in terms of, I mean, have a look at the 80s and 90s. People were probably doing, I mean, especially if you consider sprinters, probably double the yardage people do now. Um, you hear about all these crazy sets of people doing 10, 12 K at a to swim the 50 and the hundred free. Um, and now you, you don't see this as much at all. And maybe with the COVID coaches will kind of understand and see that um, rest is important. And maybe also, especially considering sort of um, a short course meters pool or a yard pool, athleticism is also very important. So maybe the coaches will start paying a bit more attention to strength and conditioning athleticism in general, but also, from another point of view, swimming is kind of a revolution. I mean, sorry, COVID is kind of a revolution in the world of swimming because, um, Olivia, you mentioned this quite a bit, um, having, having the mental break from swimming and sort of getting to reevaluate what it means to you and what it yeah. holds for you is, uh, is apparently very important for us for, uh, as swimmers. And it, it apparently shows that uh, a lot of the swimmers are – incredibly overworked both physically and mentally right yeah 100 yeah, percent. sorry do you want to go no, there you go. okay <laughs> um yeah definitely um i was smiling when you were saying that because i feel like my coach is like okay well we took all this time off it's time to hit it even mm-hmm. harder i'm sure uh greg troy in florida martin's old coach would probably say the same um which is just funny but i think it definitely just has you think about your life. I mean, so much changed in everybody's life this year. You were really put to the test mentally and you definitely reevaluate if this is something you really want to do. If you would go to the lengths of continuing to train when all of the circumstances don't align perfectly for you. So you really have to kind of take a good look in the mirror, um, about it. Uh, you know, and, and just think about, yeah, like purpose and, and, and meaning, like Marcin said, going forward. But I, during those two months um, where I was swimming much less than I ever really had, I got really strong in the weight room. And I think that carried so well for me as a sprinter, uh, so well for me, um, just in my confidence level, like I was hitting maxes that I had never hit before because I was just probably just really worked in the pool. So, I mean, carrying that now forward, uh, that muscle that I had built up um, is special. And I think that's probably something I'm definitely going to um, look back on as a blueprint for what I want to do for uh, seasons coming up. Maybe having a period of just like heavy lifting and lighter swimming, but that's something I'm going to have to talk to my coach about. But um, other than that, this was, yeah, yeah. Although, of course, we, we want to make sure everyone's safe and healthy um, throughout this time. It was definitely, uh, it caused, the, like you said, like revolution in, in this sport of swimming. Yeah, the agility and athleticism you need for short course meters is much different than, than long course. Like, you see the power that you need for more walls, starts, turns, underwaters, finishes. Like, everything happens so fast in ISL in, in the short course meters situation. 
which is what makes it so exciting. I love swimming short course. So, you know, it was great for me. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Not much to add, you know, this will, I think it's fair to say that the, um, the new training that was forced uh, upon all the swimmers during COVID will at least spark a lot of new ideas for training. You know, if, when coaches saw what, what really worked for the athletes, I think um, they should just give them more ideas for how to approach training. And um, yeah, it, it, I, could, I think I, Ivan, I, I can't remember what, he, what exactly you said, but um, you know, like the circumstance, like the humans always have to adapt to what, you know, what's brought to them, uh, to the times and, you know, like evolutionary and, you know, it's just like from era to era, right? There's like different, you know, different type of living, you know, like internet brought us so many new things that we had to adapt to and created so many uh, new opportunities for business and, you know, just lifestyle. And I think that's what happened to swimming. It was just the, the circumstances uh, has created a new situation where everyone had to adapt to and, you know, maybe it created a new, a new way of training for a lot of people. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia and Martin. Um, out of pure curiosity, how long do you guys on a typical season take a break after the season? Uh, about two, two weeks, uh, maybe like a week out of the pool and then uh, slowly start to get back into it. I stay active. But yeah, after the season, probably two weeks. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Olivia. What about you, Martin? Uh, similar, similar. Yeah. Uh... The way I train now is a little is a little different, and it, it it helps me. It allows me to be more fresh as I go through the season. It's uh, it's actually I, what's funny is I, I did a lot of the COVID training before COVID happened. <laughs> I didn't do all that much. Uh, I had a lot of uh, you know just like agility, athleticism training. Uh, so I beat I beat the the new the. Uh, the new trend and training I was there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but, no, but, but, you know, I trained a little bit less than Olivia and people, you know, and a lot of people in the Cali Condors, it's a lot of drowning training for me. Uh, so, you know, when I put together the plans, I sort of created in the way. So, it, you know, it's fun for me. Um, so then once I get done with the season, I don't really have the need of taking a long break, maybe a little bit from racing, and, but, you know, I, I'm just happy to go to the gym again once once I'm back. So, you know, like, I'll just stay active and, like, you know, maybe hang out for, for a week. But then I go back to it. It's just I just enjoy the the training routine, you know, just being, like, a little tired from weights. I think, you know, this makes me, like, more relaxed. Fair enough. Yeah, of course. But um, do you think at all that this COVID experience is going to cause a lot more people to take longer breaks after the season? Because it seems like it's benefiting a lot of you guys. Yeah, I think I think the especially from swimming, the underlying um, idea I think you're trying to hit on, um, and I think it's very accurate is a lot of people I think are overtrained in swimming, and you know, um, yeah, I'll just be honest. I think this this was this was shown now where uh, where the breaks are longer, training there's less training, people got faster. You know, so many world records and just insane performances. Um, yeah, I think, I think that, I think that could be it. That could be it. People will, will take longer breaks, um, between, between seasons, but maybe also between sessions. I, I like, I heard this cool theory, um, from one of my friends and I, I just thought it was so accurate. Um, it was like, where you're not getting better when you're training, you're actually breaking down your body when you're, when you're training. When you actually get better is when you rest. That's when you build, you know, muscle back, you know, when the systems recover stronger. So, you know, training is actually this, 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 this factor that messes you up. And then while resting, that's where the actual improvement happens. So you see how big, you know, like if you never rest, you're always going to be like over simulated and never really recovering and getting better and better. Uh, you always just going to stay flat. And then maybe as you rest towards the meat, your systems will recover and, you know, and, and built, uh, built back stronger. Um, I don't know. I just like hit, I, was, I think it was spot on, you know, this like the resting part is actually where you get better. Yeah, I think, I think it definitely could, um, uh, 
maybe push people uh, or, or have them be more comfortable with taking a break, depending on how they've raced during this time or when they get to their next race. Um, I feel like it also just will teach people how to handle like stress a little bit better. Like I said earlier, so much was out of our control. So being able to be like, it's okay. Like, you know, if I can't get to the gym today because it's closed, that's all right. I'm not going to be anxious or, or worry about that. Like there can be other uh, ways that I will get better. I think it's just, um, yeah, like Martine said, adapting to any situation that's thrown at you and understanding and being confident and secure in, in the work you had done previously in your mental, uh, yeah, confidence going forward, um, that you're going to be okay. Like this, this kind of proved to, I hope a lot of swimmers around the world that, everything it will be okay um we had such fast swimming so many records bro it's so cool it was just so uh cool to see that throughout all the adversity that uh, every swimmer had to go through this year that's still like you can make the magic happen you know if you um just trust in yourself and and let go a little bit take a little rest like martine said like um it'll still be good i guess there you go. Thank you. Or you can always think about it as, hey, I've been overworking for so long. And yeah. um, because of this, once I got this little break, I didn't hurt too bad. But now I have to work even harder to get that credit back. Um, it's a double edged sword, really. Yeah. yeah it's, a, you know, it's definitely a, a subject for a good debate. Um, you know, it, could be, it could be a thing where the 2020 was just like a one big taper and it worked well for everyone. But Mm. at the end of the day you're gonna need the you know the cranking cranking in the pool and you know just like maybe overtraining for some time so then you can you can capitalize on it yeah. all right thank you um getting a little bit more into the season and stuff um you guys both had amazing ncaa careers and during these careers unlike a typical let's say fina meet where you you tend to focus on just a couple of distances and events the ISL format, much like the NCAA format, sort of both um, facilitates you, but also requires you to swim a large number of events. And um, how 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 do you guys access this? Do you do you like racing more events, or do you enjoy um, do you enjoy focusing on one single event per meet, or maybe a couple of events? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you can go. go uh, so there's like a different different mentality that you have when you race for a FINA or Olympics. Uh, you know, when there's just like this one final that's that's coming, and there's like so much pressure. You feel you know, like you're thinking about it all the time, um, and it, it's okay. You know, it's like it's just a way of approaching the meet, but. For ISL and NCAA, you, you you come to the pool thinking of, oh, this is this block of swimming, you know, like I, you know, there's two hours. You sort of like you almost think about it as an actual match, you know, like you're gonna get out on the field and it's gonna be like warm up, race, warm down, warm down, warm up, race, you know, and you know you're gonna keep doing that for for the two hours and that automatically creates less pressure, you know, just thinking of this like experience of of the two hours that you're gonna get. And not really, you know, just putting all the mental energy into this one race. Um, so yeah, this is like just like a lighter experience. You know, like you might have a good one, one good race, then one great. Maybe one will be a little slower, but then you're gonna have another great one. Um, so you just you don't feel like it's just like one, you know, one shot and that's it. Um, you feel more as like you know engaging into the experience. Yeah, I um. I think similar Marching, you swam like what thir probably like 13 times with relays and stuff like that within yeah. two days, three days. Yeah. Yeah. It's back to back racing. And I, I said this, um, like I had never raced so much, uh, in, as I did in ISL these past six weeks, just, you know, back to back matches like this, but in terms of like, um, uh, race like load or, or the amount of events I had to swim. We've done it before. And I feel like I had to remind myself of that. I, it gives me, ISL gave me such a great um, belief that I could just go back to back to back. You know, you warm it down, you get, you reset and you get ready for the next events. Um, 
which, yeah, it just, I feel like it, it builds such great confidence knowing that you could step up the best in the world and throw down, even if it's your third or fourth event in a very short amount of time. Um, so yeah, uh, compared to FINA meets where you have, you know, this really long, it's like nine day meet, um, you have prelim semis finals, but they're very spaced out. It definitely has you focus like tunnel in on that one event, but ISL similar to, um, NCAAs lets you know that you can do this back to back to back racing and be really fast for each of these events. So I think it'll kind of give a lot of the swimmers who are at ISL just now confidence in the FINA meets that maybe, you know, I can try this event uh at the trials or whatever and 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 bring it into your portfolio going into the next um and going into that final meet martin's about to drop a 2 im on all of us he's gonna go uh do do some higher events yeah after after the 100 (laughs) im we 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 really want to see the 2 im of course are you kidding yes yes (laughs) olivia if we have a little um throwback to the final um, I mean, throughout the season, you had a bit of a rivalry going on with Kyoto Sun, right? Mm-hmm. If we if we go back to the final day one, um, a very interesting decision was made by then um, current world record holder in the fifty backstroke short course, Kyoto Sun, not to swim that mm-hmm. fifty back, and you ended up swimming the fifty back. And um, I believe the idea for Kyoto Sun was um, she wanted to rest before the four by one medley relay. Because, of course, um, we spoke to a bunch of coaches and almost all of them believe this is the most important event of the entire meet because you get to pick the skins. Mm-hmm. You actually ended up out-touching her in this hundred, first um, hundred of the 4 by one relay by quite a bit, actually. Um, do you almost feel like this, um, the fact that you kept racing, keep rolling, was the deciding factor there at all? Uh, yes, I think so. Um I, you know, we were going over, going through lineups uh, with the coaches on what events, you know, we could maximize on and what we feel like would be best for the final, because of course we wanted to be primed and ready for that medley relay. But um, obviously that that's a whole momentum turner. Um, But like I said, just, just a second ago, the belief that it, that it brought in me, ISL in totality was that I could do these back-to-back races and be okay. And, and it almost, so I was disappointed um, that Kira didn't swim the 50 back because I really wanted to get a chance to race her because it's so incredible that she got the world record, much, much respect um, for that. I wanted to race her though. So when I didn't see her in the ready room, I was like, what's up with that? So they're resting her for the medley. And then I thought to myself, you know, uh, if I, you know, well, yeah, I, I definitely went in feeling, feeling a little, um, uh, energy, uh, a little like aggression going into the medley relay because I was like, all right, I, I did the 50 and it's really time to go. Like, I know these girls, we all four of us had each other's backs and we were just ready to go, um, for that medley relay. Yeah. I just, um, it gave me a a confidence boost for sure. I really wanted to go out and and do something special in the, in the hundred of that uh, medley. And just, just to add to that, um, the coaches actually proposed Olivia not to do that 50 as well. And, uh, and, you know, it just speaks how, how badass she is. She got upset with the coaches like, no, no. And, you know, (laughs) so it was like, it was a strategy on the table for, for the Cali Condors, but you know, Olivia just wanted to do it. So, yeah, it just, you know, it just tells what type of athlete she is. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Olivia, by the way, I'm sort of backing off from what Martin said. Um, did you ever wish to swim more events that you actually ended up swimming to potentially be able to snatch that MVP title ever? Oh, yeah. You know, um, I had such a tight schedule, you know, as it was, maybe if I could have done the uh, 100 free, you know, had a crack at it um, individually would have been fun to do, uh, but very close to the 100 back. um, That one was. Uh, 
So, so maybe, maybe the, the hundred free, but I got, I was fortunate enough to lead off the relay. So I was able to see, you know, kind of maybe where I, where I would have been, um, in a lineup against, against some of the girls. Um, but yeah, I had a, I, I liked my schedule. It, it was good this year. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia. Martin, I question to you, um, a lot of the races you swim end up with Caleb Dressel. Mm -hmm. Do you guys, um, I don't know, hype each other up before the event in the cool room, or do you maybe speak a little smack to each other? How does, how does that go? Uh, uh, yeah, no, we're just like a, we're just like a good team. You know, it's a pretty much all the events I swam, I swam with Caleb, both of the butterfly sprints and the hundred I am, you know, every time we did together next to each other. Um, so yeah, it was just like cool to roll as the duo. You know, we walk into the ready room and everyone knows, we, you know, we, we frequently got one too, especially in the, in the hundred I am. So, you know, as you know, we just felt good walking in there and having people know that, you know, the Kali duo came to, came to get some points, uh, in the hundred I am, uh, yeah, that's why Caleb does this, <laughs> he does this thing on the block where he would, uh, he would, he would yell, let's go Marcin. It's like, you know, we standing by the blocks, he goes, let's go Marcin. And so we're standing on the blocks. He goes again. And then, you know, we're in the taker marks position. He goes, let's go machine, you know, <laughs> <laughs> nice blow out. Uh, yeah, he was just there for me. You know, it was good. It was good to have him. Oh, that he sounds like this- an amazing bond. Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh yeah. Uh, it's a good word. Good word. Definitely like a bonding, bonding experience we had, you know, just, you know, just doing all these races together, uh, you know, killing it in the hundred I am, I think, you know, Bring, it was bringing us closer together as we could celebrate after the race and then support each other. And obviously, I was so happy for him uh, getting all the world records. Uh, you know, it was sick. You know, his times were pretty insane. So I got a first first row view on many of them. You know, I was I was there to you know high five him as a as a first guy. So it's huge, huge. Yeah, and I will say too, like in the warm down pool, just to hype Martina up a little bit too. Uh, Caleb would say how awesome it was having Martina in the ready room. Um, he's like, he's just such a chill guy. He's sitting there like this. He's like, let's go. You know, like you guys uh, were such a cool duo to watch, you know, because back in the team area, we had the screens up and we knew the boys were going to get to work uh, every time you guys stepped on, on the block. So it's cool that, yeah, it was it was really awesome because I felt like, in individual races with the teammate next to you and in relays, like everyone wanted each other to succeed, which is what I think made the Cali Condors like that much uh, be- um, greater, I guess, uh, at what we did. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Martin, um, and this, this, this goes to Olivia as well, but not so much because um Olivia, you are an incredible talent, so as you, Marcin. But Olivia, you are the number one pick for the backstroke events for the Cali Condors. Let's be honest. There's also Beta Nelson, but she's more on the 200 side. Um, but you are probably the undoubtable leader in the backstroke events of Cali Condors. But Martin, for you, it's a little different. Because um, when we speak about talent, you are um, unparalleled. And also your work ethic, of course, um, it shows in your results. But with the presence of Caleb on the team, you, you, you are still the number, number two flyer, even though you, you, you perform incredibly. I mean, 49-18 in the final, you're kidding me? That's incredibly fast. Um, we had a discussion with a bunch of swimmers on um, what, is, what is more um, interesting for them, to be a leader in a team that is potentially a little weaker but they will be the unparalleled leaders of the team or to be a part of a team that is, um, has a better shot at making it to the final and winning the league entirely. But potentially you're not, you're not as much of a star in that team because there's someone just a touch better in your events. Mm -hmm. So a, a question to you, did you, did you ever consider sort of maybe switching teams to end up on a team where you'll be the unparalleled leader because you can pick just about any other team and be the number 100 flyer or for you, the team aspect and sort of the, the bond you've created with Cali Condors is, is more important. That's a fair question. Fair question. Uh, but no, 
No, uh, you know, I just don't really have this desire to be, uh, you know, I don't have to be the number one. And, you know, it's just like, you know, like you said, I, I came second after Caleb pretty much every time I swam, but it still made me so happy, you know, but, but I think it comes down to the expectations. Uh, you know, like I'm in a, in a spot in my life where, you know, I just treat swimming as this, I don't know, like a fun thing that I do. And I just like, don't put that much ego in, in, in the, in my, you know, in the part of my world that, you know, that is swimming. And, you know, the expectations for me were to, uh, you know, kill the second place, you know, be there, get the points for, for number two. And every time I did that, it made me super happy. So, um, yeah, like, no, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, <laughs> I didn't think of that. No. And it's the team environment. You know, there's like a greater, greater good to all of it. Um, so I never had those thoughts for sure. Oh, well, you sound like the dream teammate, Marcin. <laughs> um, Olivia, do you have anything to add up on that? Um, yeah, you know, I think although uh, being part of a team that you know is going to get a chance to win a trophy at the end of it all, especially in a circumstance, a situation like this is what gets me going above all. Um, like similar to uh, Marcin and Caleb before they would go um Bita was in the medley relay next to me um swimming the the 100 back because she wasn't there uh, individually she had a, a crazy lineup herself um so but we had backstroke both each other on the on the medley relay and I knew that she was going to bring it every single time it wasn't like um oh someone's just not going to do well on the team like everyone stepped up and rose to the occasion and to have certain leaders here and there, yes, is, is incredible, but everybody stepped up. Like, you know, to say Marcin wasn't a leader on the team would be um, uh, a misspeaking because he was such a great leader, as was everyone. Like, we would talk in our team meetings heavily about how every uh, swimmer matters and every single point that is scored uh, matters. So that is what gave... Um, I think motivation to every swimmer on the team is that, well, we all have to score points. And even if, you know, depending on the number of points that we score, it's still going to add to the total. Um, but, oh yeah, what I was going to say about the medley relay, beat and I would always be like, all right, let's go. All right, let's go. Let's go. And, and we just try to make it happen the best we could. So it worked out well. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you, Marcin. Mm -hmm. And with this being said, um, we know you're very busy people and busy athletes. And we don't want to keep you here for too long. So um, thank you so much for doing this for us. Um, it means thank the you. world. Um, and yeah, yeah, please, please, um, whenever you feel like hopping onto the podcast again, you're very welcome. Of course. Happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much I, for having us. Uh, it was a pleasure for us. Thank and for everyone watching, much. our next podcast will take place in um, exactly three days. It will be... Um, Thursday um, with the New York Breakers. And um, on Sunday, we will have the match analysis of um, match three. So please stay with us. Please join in. And with this thing being said, goodbye. And we'll see you on the next podcast. Thank you. Go doors. Go <laughs> <Fair> doors. <laughs>